Shabbat Shalom, Yisrael. Shabbat Shalom. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be rejoice and be glad in it. I'm in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 1. The Lord gave me a word today. He took me to chapter 30 in the book of Jeremiah, but he moved me about where remembrance of things was coming to mind. But the first thing that I read when I woke up was Jeremiah 4. If thou will return, O Yasharel, saith the Most High, return unto me, if thou will put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. Right now, beloved, we are giving all honor, all praise, all glory unto the Most High. Father, we come unto you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, asking that you place your Ruach HaKadosh, the anointing upon us. Guide us in thy word, thy living word of truth, and let us walk in all thy ways, and forgive us our sins and the sins of our ancestors. For our prayers have pierced the cloud, and you have heard us. Our prayers have gone before thy holy throne and thou has released thy vengeance upon the heathen and it shall not turn back. But look now upon Yasharel in our sins and forgive us for greater our afflictions in the lands of our captivity. We know that through you only is our salvation and our hope and our deliverance. And we praise, honor, bless, and glorify thee. For thee are all deserving, almighty, the only one true Yahuwah, the God of gods. There is none but thee. There is none likened unto thee. Remove from us a stony heart and put in us a heart of flesh. Circumcise the foreskins of our heart. Circumcise our ears that we are sensitive to thy word and to let our spirit be sensitive to thine Holy Spirit as thou come down and anoint us. We know, Father, our sin, but we also know thou art our redeemer and that thou hast come to redeem Yasharel. Everything that we have, everything that we hope for, it's from you, Father. And we give you all praise this day, this Shabbat, as we follow, as we turn away from the abominations of the heathens, as we get, grow a deaf ear to all their words, and we become sensitive to thee. Be the light on our path as we journey through these dark lands. And as thy rage has fallen upon the earth, for the sins that they have committed. Protect and keep us, guide us and bring us home as we rejoice and give thee praise this day and all days forevermore. We give you thanks, Father. We praise you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, that glorious, everlasting, eternal word of life. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Beloved, we are returning, we have returned unto the Lord. And this day, the Lord has a word. I'm going into the book of Jeremiah chapter 30. I've marked it starting at the third verse. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Yasharel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Many of us wait and we look and we watch. But there is a process, beloved, that as he's about to bring us home, he is also punishing the heathen. We're going down. We're in chapter 30 of the book of Jeremiah. We're going down to the seventh verse. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but
but he shall be saved out of it. Many of us are seeing these storms and these fires, and we see everyone is affected, but Jacob shall be saved out of it. Thus saith the Lord, for it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke off thy neck. What yoke? His yoke. Let's look and see what the word yoke means. Metaphorically, a yoke in the Bible means hard work. In other cases, it means servitude, slavery, or bondage, just as in the slavery of the Israelites in Egypt. Many people think that because we no longer have those shackles on our hands and on our feet, that we are not in servitude, but we are in servitude, beloved. You see, the day is coming when we won't work for a system that taxes us and spends the money on themselves, making us thus occupational slaves. The day is coming when we create something and another will not take our ideas, our inventions, and sell them back to us while giving no credit to us as the inventors, as the creators, nor giving us the financial power over what we have done. That your beloved, that hard work, working for others that do not have our best interest at heart that yoke, when we serve a true justice system under the most high, instead of a corrupt justice system that judges not according to true law and true justice, but according to the color of our skin or the amount of money we have in a bank account, that yoke, beloved, when he breaks that yoke, that yoke that says when your son or your daughter goes out, you can't be sure how the so-called lawless law will treat them or if they will even survive. And when these lawless ones murder them and they are given a pardon, we're talking about that yoke, beloved, that yoke that will be removed, that yoke that is being exposed, that yoke, that corruption that we are in right now, beloved. That yoke, hard work. We work and work and work and many of us think we pay for a house and now we own it. No, you don't. You don't own the land that it sits on and even if you own that, you're paying taxes. And if you don't pay the taxes, they will seize it, that yoke, beloved. We will return now, for it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke off thy neck and will burst thy bonds. What bonds? We look and see what bond means according to scripture, an obligation of any kind, an obligation. The word means also oppression, affliction, in this system that we are in, this unholy system, that bond, an obligation. You see, whether you believe it or not, particularly here in America, but in those other countries as well, from the moment that you are born, you sign a social contract of sorts. This social contract that says you will adhere to the laws of the land, although those same laws oppress and afflict you, rob, rape, and brutalize you, you are under a bond, beloved, an obligation. Whether you sign on the dotted line or not matters not. You are under a social contract, particularly here in the Americas, but it is also worldwide to follow those governments and those laws of the lawless ones that govern you. You are bound by a bond, okay, an obligation. It also means an oppression and affliction, okay, beloved, that bond. All right, we're going back. <clears throat> For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke, that oppressive, 
hard work. You see, many people think that when the physical slavery here in America was so-called gotten rid of in uh, 1865 at the end of the Civil War, that slavery was over. But what you don't understand is before the Civil War, the majority of the people that were in prisons were Babylonians. But at the end of the Civil War, Suddenly, Yasharel was criminalized so that he could fill up prisons and he could be loaned out as prisoner lease programs. They would use you under that yoke of bondage that they continued. They just did it through a prison system. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will break his yoke off thy neck and will burst thy bonds, those things that bind you to a system, bind you to a nation that knows not the true law, statutes, and commands of Yahuwah. Because if they did, many of these egregious acts would have never been committed. Okay. Mm. And strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. What does that mean? Hmm. When you want to buy product, and they won't allow Yasharel to sell to one another. They won't give you that same uh, national or global advertisement. Strangers come in and get up above you. No, 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 no. And strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. You see, you won't be concerned about buying Nike products or buying these hair products from foreigners. Uh, who look at you and follow you around stores like your thieves, that great black hair care industry that is not run by Yasharel, although they serve themselves of Yasharel. You will not have to buy their products because you will buy and sell amongst yourselves according to the law, statutes, and commands of the Most High, and there will be just weights and measures. You will not be charged a lot and given little. Charge for quality and giving something that is below quality standards. No, beloved. Strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Okay. There are people right now, we are dependent on a system to bring in water. You got to pay whatever that water company tells you or that electric company tells you or that gas company tells you, you have to pay the oil company's prices when you go and gas up your machines or heat your house. Strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. That's what he's talking about, beloved. Now we shall move down to verse 11. For I am with thee, mm, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I will make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet I will not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. You see, right now we're seeing that Yasharel is in the midst of all these calamities, okay? Because Yasharel is not going to be left altogether unpunished, but he told us, I am with thee. Okay, right now, the world is going through what we would call a mental health crisis, okay, because they have not followed the way of the most high, okay? They are going through a mental health crisis. Climate disasters will strain. This is what they're saying in the Washington Post, our mental health system. And it's time to adapt. No, beloved, they have robbed, they have marauded. All these things, they've gathered up money in heaps. There's no such thing as a climate disaster. It's a people disaster because they had no regard for the earth that the Lord created. Okay, this is beyond some climate disaster and they are not prepared for it. I was going to bring up a lot of news reports where one of the things they're constantly saying is we've never seen anything like this before. This is a constant that they're saying we've never seen 
anything like this before. But what did Yahuwah tell them? We're going to go. My previous video, I talked about it, Micah 515, the book of Micah 515, and I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, heathen such as they have not heard. Wait a minute. But all the newscasters, we've never seen anything like this. In the history of all our record keeping, we've never heard, we've never seen. But what did the Most High say he would do when he comes for his beloved? When he comes for those sinners, for those heathens, for those unrepentant souls? Hmm. And I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard? Hmm. Hmm. Are we hearing it in the news? I've never seen anything like this. It's going on globally. I've never known anything like this. They want to call it climate change. We're calling it Yahoo's vengeance. This isn't climate. He uses the weather as his weapons of war, his arsenal. He could create the most high, can do anything he wants. He's using the weather, beloved. He's using the weather. I said in a previous video, the one right before this, I want that full chapter to come. And I believe it's here. Let me go down to it. Hmm. Wait a minute. I got to make sure that I have it. Yes, the book of Micah chapter 10. I mean, I'm sorry, the book of Micah chapter 5, verse 10. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses, thy mobility out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, thy engines of war. All he did was pull out his arsenal. We're going to look at just a little bit of it, beloved. We're going to look at what the Lord said. They want to call it climate change. But the Lord told them these evils that they commit, he told them, but they don't want to believe, beloved. Let's take a look. <laughs> I'm going to move throughout, beloved. I'm going to move throughout, so I'm going to skip around just to give you a little bit because we've been inundated with this. Millions swelter without power in Louisiana heat in Ida's aftermath. Folks, okay. It just went from bad to a catastrophe. I mean, could not get any worse. Uh, you're looking inside my kitchen, and you can see, and the water is still rising. It is another total disaster here in Laplace. And I'm going to skip around the key spots. This morning, firefighters in South Lake Tahoe are the last line of defense between the massive Caldor fire and thousands of homes. The fire has been very volatile. Every time we think we're getting a foothold and get some containment lines put in, it shows us that it's going to do what it wants. The fire's massive smoke spreading into neighboring states as it threatens Lake Tahoe. A summer paradise known for its turquoise waters now shrouded in smoke and flame. We're going on to verse 4. I'm sorry, I'm moving into the fourth portion of this. Wildfires turn more than half. I'm sorry, I had it. We're just going to watch. This is in Brazil. I'm just moving about, okay? I'm moving throughout. This is not happening in one place, as it is written in the book of Second Baruch. I'm moving throughout just to give you a glimpse, beloved, of the world of the Lord comes in the world.
30. The black man operator. There goes church. There it is. There's the center of it. Again, I'm going to move. Now we're talking about the trout. I'm going to move and start discussing the current trout. condition. Not only is the drought serious, but the water situation locally is dire as well. And there's an urgent need right now to begin conserving water. The situation has been the most dire we've seen in our county probably ever. Conditions at the county's second largest reservoir, Lexington and the Santa Cruz Mountains, are better, but not by much. Lexington is over three quarters empty at just 23% of its total capacity. And I'm going to pause it there to show you the difference in he is using fire, he is using the whirlwinds, he is using water, he is drying up water in some places and overflowing water in others. This is the lake in California three years ago, five months ago, and last week. Same picture, beloved. I just want to share the power of the fury of the most high. And many people, because I've had one person tell me that uh, if you're celebrating this sadistic God, see, I know, first of all, that the person that wrote to me was a heathen because he wasn't considered sadistic as long as Yasharel and the nations that were oppressed were under all of this terror, all of these strife and stress. He wasn't considered that then, but instead of glorying, honoring, and repenting to the Most High, they are cursing and calling him names, okay? Calling him sadistic and you don't want to serve him. I don't believe you ever did serve him if you can call him sadistic in all types of names that you wrote me about, okay? Because those of us who understand the most high, understand he will not tolerate sin. And because of the vileness of the sins that has been committed, he's cleansing the land, beloved. We're going back to the book of Jeremiah. where he says, for I am with thee to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee. He's tearing down the infrastructure. He's turning it on its head. There is no weapon of war that they can send out. There is no machinery that they can send. Many people go, I don't know how it's going to happen. And they give flesh a lot of credit do you know he can just put in a whirlwind and they can't drive? He's sending down hailstones. What difference does it make what they launch in the sky when he sends whirlwinds, hailstones? Where will they stop their vehicles when the floods come, beloved? This is the hand of the Most High. This is not a man, okay? But I want to go into, but I will correct thee in measure. We're in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 11, at the end of the verse. But I will correct thee, he's talking to Yashorel, in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished, okay? And we know that because when we go to the book of Jeremiah in the 27th verse, forgive me, I'm just going to read it instead of trying to find it here. Wait a minute, can I see that full chapter? We're going to the 27th verse. For thus hath the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet I will not make a full end. He's talking about Yasharel, who will not go unpunished, but he's saving us, beloved. Okay, I'm also going to go to the book of Jeremiah, verse chapter 10. Verse 24, forgive me, bear with me as I move because I actually have the book out, okay? Even though I have it up on screen, I also have it out. Oh Lord, 
This is Yasharel. Correct me, but with judgment, not in thy anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. Pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know thee not and upon the families that call not on thy name, for they have eaten up Jacob and devoured him and consumed him and has made his habitation desolate. I'm reading from chapter 10, verses 24 and 25 in the book of Jeremiah. Beloved, we are honoring, glorifying, and praising the Most High. And I'm about to finish. Okay, I'm about to finish. We're still in chapter 30, book of Jeremiah. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. A fierce, the fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it, until he have performed the intents of his heart in the latter days. Ye shall consider it. Yes, beloved, yes. And this day, we give the most high honor and glory. We glorify the most high. We are in the book of Amos chapter nine, verse eight. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. Beloved, we are in the midst of it. We are seeing the most high, his fury, and it is unlike anything they have ever seen or heard. Jacob's redemption has come. He's breaking the yoke and the bonds that are upon us. Strangers shall no longer serve themselves of us. There is so much going on that before they can mention COVID or Delta, they're looking at storms and whirlwinds and fires and chaos. One of the things that the news is reporting that they are not prepared. The infrastructure is not prepared. They don't have enough drains. They don't have enough response system to help the people. This is not because they could not have had them. They were spending the money, mismanaging it, pocketing it. It is a corrupt system and the most high is exposing it, but he's got his hand over Yasharel. That is why this Sabbath, we give all honor, praise, glory, and thanksgiving unto our father. We are precious in his sight. And all those that call on his name, believing, receiving his love, we know, Father, our redemption is here. And we want to thank you, praise you, honor, and glorify you. Come, Father, let thy word be true and come. Forgive us our sins, the sins of our ancestors as we turn toward thee with a circumcised heart, with circumcised ear, sensitize our spirits to thee, that we long for thee, like one panting for water in the desert, like a dying man longs for life, for thou art our life, Father. In this our both, we raise holy hands unto thee, thanking you, asking for the forgiveness of our sins, our people, and the sins of our ancestors. All praise, all honor unto the most high. May you go forth as a man of war, crushing the heathen, tearing down this unholy Babylon, this worldwide system that it rises no more and bring thy people home. Glory, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Beloved, Shabbat Shalom, a word.